going to start the test and it's seven tests I've been recorded so far. The total number of active cases in our day or yesterday so far remains at 34. The further note that when the enforcement and death rate statistics and data supplied by the NCDC and COVID-19 National and State Task Force is staggering and points to the total factor, additional resolutions, as well as different steps, relevant steps, have been taken by government and other stakeholders in order to contain and overcome the deadly and pandemic virus. Aware that COVID-19 transcends the barrier of race, status, age, and gender. The news of the deadliest of seven lawmakers for late of ours in the National State of Assembly due to having been infected by the deadly virus broadly comes to mind. Further aware that the efforts and governance of our general government to imagine the chairman of the United COVID-19 task force has not been gone on notice, has not gone on notice at the national level. His Excellency has been at the third block of the world. People have been told to back that the first step was for COVID-19. He was still handling the affairs of the state with Deborah and a determined and focused will to win. The effort of our uh, God self man, GSM, and the entire COVID-19 task force in the state are hereby appreciated. It is obvious that the federal government of Nigeria has been prompted by our government to focus some measures for the containment of the virus being implemented at the first setting state. If you are not aware of that, you will be able to make it for more. And the motion of the needs to further contain and overcome pandemic COVID-19 and the negative public health, social and economic impact on the citizens of the state. That are affecting the community to the extent that all the landlords and landladies are awake, burning tires on our roads and bulk due to the hardship in the country. As we all know, that there is hardship to our people because before the pandemic, due to this pandemic, there is oil crash around the world. And many people during this pandemic also they have lost their job. Many people during this pandemic issue they have lost their breadwinner. Many people they are unable to do anything. Many businesses have been crippled due to this pandemic, which has affected a lot of things. This pandemic have also affected various schools in this priority and in this country at large. My own observation is this. According to my own findings, according to what is happening around the states, the issue of tenancy issue, which many landlords, many landlords will have to commend, most of those landlords will have to commend the ones to the extent that we have seen it on social media that landlords are giving relief package to their tenants. We will also need to commend all these landlords also. But in some other ways also, in most cases that I've seen and um, from my own research, many landlords have been giving their tenants or capital issues due to their household. We cannot blame them also because they are that is the source of their own life. But I want to ask the reason that we will need to appeal to the landlord and landlords and the caretaker or agent of all these various houses or shops. So please, we are appealing to them, we are not mandating to them that they should relieve their tenants for three months so that at the end of the, before the end of the three months, I pray that all the businesses will be packed.
mean that like uh, motor parts, uh, the imams, and the um, uh, pastors as well. Having said that with the speaker, my our hearts will let you smile. Our hearts goes out to those people that lost their lives to this pandemic. The Almighty God grants them eternal rest. Uh, from a human perspective, how we are conclusion, what we are telling is how to do combat it. Uh, so far, so good, we have to from our people who have come to take on the weather uh, to solve temporarily or to assist many people. I want to tell you, right away, Mr. Peter, that people are really suffering. On any basis, children are seen here, they receive only than 1,500 messages in a day, asking for support, either financially or in terms of. So if you have seen anybody who has supported the only other that you will try to let their destiny to go to that person. Uh, regardless of the way anybody might have done it, nobody is impacted and nobody has another of their knowledge. I want to read this for I mean for this of it. That number one, we discovered that some people are recovering from COVID-19. How did it happen? What the passion? What are the type of drugs? What are the type of measures? They put in place for those people to come back to life, despite some people are told about. Um, but we we'll know that if this government avoid the executive to collaborate with the research centers, the universities, and the pharmaceutical council of Nigeria, to let's find a equilibrium, a middle point looking for that thing that they have been using, even if one does not give them permanent we can be able to recommend that at least everybody should have this in his or her On social media, we have had a lot of it, but it's not coming from a public authority. It is not tested in the of But if it comes from a public authority, we'll be able to have self-confidence that this, and we have seen some people have said, use turmeric, use garlic, use this, use that, but there is a chemical effect of it on the body. Nobody has ever told us. We don't know the gravity. We don't know the quantity. So I'm of opinion that if the executive can work with the research centers, we have the London, we have the uh, University of Nevada here, the research people there, then we can collaborate with the pharmaceutical center of Nigeria, and we can come out with something at least that will be a measure of uh, relieving people from uh, uh, having this kind of thing. Even if they have symptoms, they can be able to use it as a, a first aid before they contact the SCD. Uh, that's number one. Uh, number two, I look at the most effect of this COVID-19. Uh, when we read news or listen to news, we see that at this point in time, I'm always telling one that even before we can recover economically, after this COVID-19, it will not take more than six months. Now, the situation we find ourselves in Nigeria today, most of our oil and all these things that we have produced, they are on the sea. Nobody can claim it, no money, nobody is buying anything. Uh, I want to believe that it's only the grace of God that every state in Nigeria were able to pay the, uh, every salary. Now, we don't know what will happen this year. We don't know what will happen in June. Now, how prepared are we to solve this issue? Even after COVID-19, what is going to be the effect on the economy of the state? The thing about that, more than 100 lives have uh, been lost every day in this country to that. This is not what I left. I got now to the big bottom. Almost two months now. We have not lost two hundred lives. All sorts of the life have been put on the list. When we are looking at life again, government will not put you in just to go to the market seat for unemployment, for bad day, for dinner back every year. They are pressing. I think the if the is true anyway, I think I did it. But we have to understand that there is a solution. We have to leave you. And understand that we don't have to just copy the science based dimensions. Please, those who are testing, we need to start first. In Gaia, OJ, for Paul. People who are very rich and poor, who are living, you will discover temperature more than 40. You are living with you here. If they are there, that is for itself. They go and prepare you and believe this time has come. So we have to look at our peculiarity at the time of, of, of time. So that we are based on our life, according to our peculiarity, and 
just cut people in neighboring states to shut us inside. He applied partial shutdown of coffee. We thank the Excellency for that. That's another area of peculiarity. You know, because the, the, the state of government, they are shut down in what they eat. We apply reason. And that reason, imagine our, 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 our cases, it's still minimal. That could have shut them up, increasing them every day. Thank you for that. My prayer, Mr. Speaker, please, that question is to every member. It is high time we open our little bodies. Yeah, I'm going to. 
Shady and I represent the people of Abidrio State Constituency. Um, like my colleagues, I want to uh, celebrate my brother that brought this motion to the floor. Uh, we expect nothing less from him. It's very detailed and we thank him. I also want to thank His Excellency for the work done so far in uh, putting a curb to the spread of coronavirus. <clears throat> I want us to understand that what we are fighting is not a physical thing. We are fighting a virus. Someone we cannot see. And the honest truth is that this is a war. And when you are in a war, you don't act casually. They say, Mr. Speaker, nobody has a choice whether you should come to them or not. But what we do have is power in our own hands. We are the leaders. We should stop pointing fingers at the leaders. We are the leaders. We are the ones that are, who are looking now. And the executive, no matter how much they try, they cannot be the law. Government, all of us, we cannot be the law. I think this is a time for collaboration. We need to work with the private sector. We need to work with the academia. We need to stop acting like government knows everything. We don't. Nobody does. But when we put our hands together, we can solve this issue. I think this is a time that we need to communicate more. I think when you have a pandemic or a crisis, one of the things people expect from their leaders is communication. We need to talk more. They are looking. They don't know what to do, so they are looking at their leaders and are asking, what are we going to do? The leaders must not be hiding now. We must be talking. This is a time to show care. People need us to show care now more than ever before. They don't care what we say. They care how we make them feel. And so this is a time for each and every one of us in this room to join hands to make sure that we bring care and support to the people. Yes, we don't have everything, but we are available and we are ready to work. And I think that must be our disposition and not one of saying, these people, these people, these people. We are the people they are looking at. We are the leadership. And if we look at the world, that the countries that have conquered this issue, it has been a leadership thing. The biggest challenge is not the coronavirus, it's the way the leadership will react to it. We've heard of countries like New Zealand, we've heard of some Jeff, Jeffrey, and the rest of them. It's the leadership, the same coronavirus affects all of us. So we must all stand up and take our own part and say, look, what can I do? Because everybody can do something. And so, Mr. Speaker, I just really want us to know that amongst all of this, there are still opportunities. And we must come with that mindset that we are the opportunities. I think, um, thank God, our health system is getting more attention. Maybe that's a silver lining in the whole thing. But, you know, my constituency has rural areas. And I keep wondering, are these children not going to go to learn till September? Are we going to, our own children are learning on, in online classes. What about the children that cannot learn? Do they abandon it totally? What are the measures we should be saying now that government can do? I want to thank the Commissioner of Education. I spoke to him and he told me we are on radio, we are on TV, we are even online, on Telegram. These are fantastic measures put in place. The only thing is that we can still do more because the rural community may not have light for radio and TV and Android. So what other measures should we put in place? Should we have dispatch riders taking assignments to the children in the rural areas and collecting it back every Friday? What are the solutions? Because we must look in one and find our own solutions. If we look at other countries, they have online so they can teach their children. We don't have that. But we can have dispatch riders come and take assignments from the rural teacher and take it to all the households and come back and take it so that we don't expose too many people. So these are the things I think we should be saying. In the place of health, I think one of the biggest things we can do now is prevent it. And that it takes a lot of information dissemination. We need, because as my colleagues have said, a lot of people don't believe it. They feel it's a foreigner's disease. But we see that people are dropping dead even in Nigeria, so it's not foreigner. 
to enlighten our people so that they do not come to this mindset of Kokoma, Oshara, Kolo, Mike. It's not a matter of whether we are all praying, but we must take preemptive measures because we see people are dying. So, Mr. Speaker, I just want to say that uh, we need to join hands with the executive. And on that note, Mr. Speaker, I'd like us to add that one of us in this house should be part of that tax force so that the house is carried along, so that we know what the tax force is doing part time. And that person can report back so that we know when they call us at home what government is doing. We should not be finding out things in the media. We should find it out before it gets to the media. Somebody in this house should be part of the tax force so that when information needs to come out, we know ahead of time and we can guide our people. So these are the sort of things you need to be talking about, Mr. Speaker. I think we really need to come together, work with the CDAs, work with the tax associations, work with people like that so that they can disseminate this information. Because our people, I mean, maybe the bad of the know. But I can tell you some people still think it's a joke. We have NOA, National Orientation Agency. We should use them. We already have structures on how to get to these rural areas. And so that that way we can come in and flatten the curve. Mr. Speaker, um, I think while this is a pandemic, ignorance is a bigger issue. And we must fight it with everything. So that was the the executive government to extend testing centers to other areas in order for us to detect the status of um, guests from outside the country to prevent the spread. So definitely to extend testing centers to other areas. But there's a need for us to encourage the citizens to get tested. And then leading by example will be the best way. So we can also put that as part of the resolution. But in, in all, I believe that this motion is perfect for our time. And the resolutions in it are, are very complete and as due to what we are going, to, going through right now in the states and in the country. Those in favor of this following resolution say aye. Aye. Those against say nay. The eyes are it. At this point, we pray and we encourage us to use our face mask as much as possible. Although we know God is our protector and God is the one that saves us all, but heaven help those who help themselves, and we have to take precautionary measures by using our face mask at this time. Thank you very much.